Uh, welcome to today's webinar about universal equitable access with Access Tax Network and CAPTI. Uh, ensuring that all students, especially those with disabilities, can access instructional materials is probably the job description for most of our attendees today, so this should be interesting. My name is Yevgen. About 20 years ago, I decided to dedicate my career to improving computer accessibility for people with disabilities. And it's been an exciting ride. I'm currently a part-time research professor at Stony Brook University, uh, at SUNY System in New York, and the CEO of CAPTI, the all-in-one solution to support and accommodate reading for college students, faculty, and staff. I'll be your host today, and today's featured speaker is Dawn Evans from Access Text Network. Before we go to, to our guest speaker, I uh, just wanted to frame the problem is that we have about 20% of undergrads reporting disability. You know it what, better than anyone. About 5% of students typically experience a barrier to printed books and they need to access the same content as at the same time as all the other students. And this is a part of the uh, equitable access to content. And CAPTI and Access Tax Network have been working together to help provide equitable access and level the playing field for all students. And this is why we invited Don Evans from ATN to tell us how ATN will help you improve access for students with disabilities. And I will then show you how you can make the books from ATN and other any other content more accessible with CAPTI. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Don Evans of Access Text Network. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me, Yevgen. And thank you for presenting. Okay, um, so, um, you know, in short, folks, I, I know that most of you probably are familiar with the Access Text Network, um, but, you know, it's the fastest and easiest way to request and receive files from publishers. So, Don, what is Access Text Network? How, how big is it? Sure. So, um, first off, it's a free service. It is an absolute essential tool for all disability services offices um, because it gives you access to electronic text formats of the books that your students with disabilities needs in a very fast manner. Um, it's user-friendly, it's very simple. Um, you simply log in and you place a request on behalf of your student. Uh, currently we have 57 publishers growing all the time and 3,078 post-secondary institutions as members of ATN. Wow, that's a lot. So nearly 50% we're getting there. So how would ATN help our audience better support their students? Sure. So what you most often receive in ATN is a publisher PDF. And as many of you know, the publisher PDFs aren't fully accessible yet. Sometimes they require a little extra work, a little extra tweaking. Um, but more and more publishers are now producing fully accessible EPUB files and making those available for you to receive on ATN. The great benefit of EPUB files rather than PDF is that Publishers have often inserted alternative text into the images for you. Like you don't have to do that for your student using a screen reader. The publisher did it for you. Um, the reading order will always be great. There are usually many, many levels of headings within those EPUBs. So that eases the navigation throughout the textbook for the student. And some publishers are even inputting MathML into their EPUB files. So there's, I would highly encourage you to look into that. It's a great resource. So um, why not just go and directly ask for a book from a publisher? Sure. Yeah, I mean, okay, so really we've got three scenarios here. So let's take a look at them. Like the first scenario would be you're, you know, going back to the olden days and sometimes it's still required where you're chopping and scanning a book. The second scenario is where you're requesting from the publisher um, outside of ATN, not using ATN. And we'll go into... Um, yeah, we'll get there. And then the third scenario is using ATN, which spoiler alert, you're going to find that that's going to be the best and most efficient way to go. All right. So scenario one, you know, requires you to procure a hard copy of that book so that you can then chop the spine off of in order to have loose leaf pages that you can run through a scanner. Then you have an image of the book. All of the words are images and you need to turn them into actual text so that text to speech and screen readers can access it. That requires you running this image PDF through some optical character recognition software, OCR, such as Abby Fine Reader or Kurzweil. Um, it's pretty time intensive and uh, we all know that your jobs are really busy. Um, okay, so scenario two, 
is where you're requesting from the publisher outside of ATN. You're either filling out their online form or you're um, sending them an email asking them for a file. So for this example, I'm just going to use Pearson um, because Pearson is a member of ATN. They also have an online form on their website where you can request files. Um, on this, um, on this uh, slide. Uh, this is the beginning of Pearson's online request form for students with print disabilities. And it says that it may take up to 10 business days for you to receive the electronic file. Ouch. Okay. And then on this slide, it goes in. Now I'm showing you the rest of their form and all of the fields that are required to get through it. Um, and it's saying that you want the book introduction to audiology, who you are, what your contact info is, what's the course that requires it, who's the instructor, um, part three of the of the form is purchase and distribution of the file. When did your student buy it? Where did they buy it? How much did they pay? Part four of the form is the name of your school and the address. Part five, you read through the legal agreement. And finally, we reach the end of the form and we can click on submit. And then you wait. You're not you'll never get a file immediately doing that online form. You have to wait. Um, my dear friend Grace over at Pearson has received your request at this point, and she's going to manually process it for you as soon as she can. Third scenario, if you had used ATN for that book, Introduction to Audiology, to request it, well, you would search for that ISBN in ATN, and this screenshot is what pops up. It's the request record. There's only three required fields that you want to publish your file, what format you want, PDF or EPUB, and the student ID, a unique confidential identifier for your student. All the other fields are optional and you click on save. Very simple, many, many, many less fields than publishers online forms to request. Um, and in ATN for this title and for 65% of our titles and growing, um, you're going to get the file immediately. And Grace at Pearson, didn't have to lift a finger and your student gets the file immediately. So it's a win, win, win. So <clears throat> once you click save, this next page shows you that your request is fulfilled. You scroll down to the bottom, there's the download link and you have your file. You save it to your computer and share it with the student. And you can also at the bottom of your request, click on message the publisher where you can ask any question that you have to the publisher. Um, so that is the benefit of ATN. Um, let's see. What's next? Okay. So it's it's free. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very quick, and it's standardized. Um, it is. I'm sold. I'm sold. So, does ATN have any eligibility requirements? Yes, it is um, only for post-secondary institutions in the U.S. and Canada. Um, I would love to expand someday. Maybe we can. And then it is specifically for the staff at that college who's responsible for accommodating students with disabilities. Um, and to join, it's very easy. Go to accesstext.org, click on join, put in your information, read the membership agreement, submit. I'll get notification that you applied. I will verify your eligibility by searching for you on your school's website. And then I will send you login credentials. And um, you know, when you get your first file, all you have to do is sort of internally through your own process, verify proof of purchase with the student, and then you can give them the file. Uh, this looks very simple. And I think you're going to get more members after this webinar. But with over 3,000 member institutions, ATN is clearly doing something right. So what do the DSS staff say about ATN? Sure. So I'll read you a couple of testimonials. Um, uh, Nicole Subic at Villanova University says access text is just wonderful. The interface is really easy to use. It's really easy to search for books. The turnaround time is remarkably fast. And then Stephanie Staley, a uh, Disability Support Services Coordinator at Concordia University in Portland says, the biggest way that access text impacts my work is that it's the first place that I go to when I'm searching for an accessible textbook. If they have it, it saves me time and money, and it makes sure that my students get accessible textbooks in the fastest way possible. I really appreciate the feedback from our members. It's really helpful to know that ATN is such a support to them. Thank you all for taking the time to listen about ATN. All right, and uh, before we continue, I, I thought would would ask you a few questions since uh, you talked about Pearson. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question from Canada, 
in Canada, we're not able to get books from Pearson through Access Text. Do you think this will change soon? I have continuously been working on them ever since we onboarded uh, Canadian post-secondary institutions. And Pearson has made some wonderful changes recently. I don't believe that they're denying requests because title available in vital source anymore, folks. Really good news. They're storing files for automatic fulfillment. I'm still working on them on uh, the Canadian request. Um, so I hope that I can have some good news for you soon. And I'll ping them again today. And one more uh, Pearson related question from Eileen. Pearson has been requiring us to request directly from them and to use vital source. Are they now working with access text? Yes, much more heavily. They are, um, they're putting pretty much all their eggs in the access text basket. So you no longer need to email disability.support at Pearson, da, 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 da. Um, you no longer have to go through that rigmarole. You should not have any more denied requests because of the reason of title being available in vital source anymore. If you do tell me, um, and I'll keep on the lookout for that, but those days should be over. And Pearson has made the extraordinary step of storing thousands of their files on ATN for automatic fulfillment. So we're, we're at a new day and age, folks. I hope that you find that to be very great news. Great. All right. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you. Let me share my screen and pick up from where you left off. All right. All right, so CAPTI. CAPTI is an all-in-one solution to support and accommodate reading for college students, faculty, and staff. Let me jump to the demo and show you how you can easily do this with CAPTI. So here I'm logged in as a student and another browser as a, as a faculty staff member. So if I have a book from Access Text Network, all I have to do is to go to content sharing, create a new shared playlist. And playlist is where you can assemble reading materials that students can read and listen to. So I could make this uh, for a specific student or a specific book. Um, so let's call it psych. Create. I then go to select the students, one or more that, that need to get this material. So it's gonna be Mo Sala. And then I'm going to go to content. I think it opens here in the, in the new tab. Oh, so far he's blocking it as always. There it is. This is the playlist. I can select plus track where I can add files from my computer, from the web, from Google Drive, Dropbox, One, OneDrive and other sources where I can just drag and drop files in here as well. So go to Google Drive where I can go to add from my computer. And here I have a book from Access Text Network on psychology. I choose the book and I can import it either in adaptable layout or original layout. And uh, maybe I'll do both. Adaptable and again, the same book in the original layout. And if this was not accessible, I could just OCR it as well. But from Access Text Network, the PDFs are fully accessible. So once the content loads in here, students or more specifically will, will get immediate access to, the, to this text. So I can just close this out and save. And here are the two PDFs I just added. So uh, they're immediately delivered to the students. So if, if I go to my playlists as a student and go to site, here are the two books. And one is an adaptable layout, which means that I can turn on, for example, a different font, open dyslexic for students with dyslexia. Um, I can turn on masking. I want to, want to see a little bit of text at a time. Line spacing, different color schemes, for example, if I need high contrast. Um, and more importantly, I can just start anywhere 
and press play to listen to it. And I can read it at different, uh, with different voices, different speech rate, and so on. And if you load the book in the original layout, it will look exactly as it was laid out and intended. And you could do everything else that you could do uh, with any book in Capti, but uh, you just cannot change the, the fonts. You can still zoom in. Now here, besides the text-to-speech, students have a variety of different tools. For example, uh, they can select any text, highlight it, annotate it, add comments. They can look up the meaning of words. Um, for example, if I'm an international student, I could right-click a word and say, translate to about a hundred different languages and add this to my word list. And I can also write just on top of this. I can say, insert a textbook, textbooks and I can dictate my own notes here. Then besides, um, besides the textbooks, I can add any PDFs, I can add any web pages, um, and I can also add materials from, uh, from Canvas or, or Blackboard. So here, if you, if, if you shared the book with a student via Canvas, this is how they would add it. And besides just organizing any reading materials, you can also use Capture to access a new web page. For example, select the text, view it accessibly, or listen to it. Capture opens up a little window, and we also can customize the font sizes and colors and so on. And again, add this directly to your playlist by clicking Save or save the entire web page. So Capti makes it really easy for students to organize content. They can listen to it, they can annotate it, um, they can uh, create notes, highlights, use active reference tools, and so on. Um, and Let's go back to our presentation. So for students, it helps level the playing field, improve access to any file document. They can read and listen to any web pages. And for faculty and staff, it simplifies workflows, make any content accessible and share it, administer accessible assignments and tests. And yes, you could turn on the secure browser in Capti as well and administer a test. Uh, we have various integrations. Google, Blackboard, Canvas, and so on. These are some of our partners. Uh, CAPTI has been very well recognized by National Science Foundation, Department of Education, as well as FCC and MIT Technology Review, and so on. Um, these are some of the quotes we, we're hearing from, um, from our clients. So CAPTI allowed, allowed us to use one reader instead of using multiple readers. And I've seen somebody from Lubbock uh, attending this webinar. Thank you for the quote. Uh, CAPTI has been, become my first choice in sharing accessible materials with students approved for audio course text. Students are more independent in acquiring and reading text they need. That's what more can we hope for? The students are independent and have equitable access. So in essence, CAPTI helps you address compliance, improve student success, and boost persistence to graduation. Now we do have a special offer for uh, attendees of this webinar and you can use the uh, CARES Act funding uh, to pay for CAPTI. These are, these are a few uh, entry level packages and it gets much cheaper per student the more students you support. And just a reminder, you know, if you get CAPTI for even 100 students, retaining one student actually pays for CAPTI and saves money for, for the university. Uh, more importantly, CAPTI does help students to persist to graduation. We've had a lot of uh, 
wonderful comments and thank you notes from students such as I would not be able to complete my reading assignments in time, was able to get my reading assignments done for the first time in my entire life and kept allowed me to stay in college and continue to pursue my degree. Thank you for sticking around to the Q&A. We're happy to answer any questions. Uh, there was a question as whether Capti works with EPUBs. And the answer is yes, we support EPUBs, PDF, Word, RTF, uh, PowerPoint, you name it, we support it, even Daisy. Uh, Capti, does Capti integrate with Canvas? As a, yes, uh, the, the easiest thing to do is to connect it so that students can import content from Canvas. If, professors share anything, any course materials, uh, any papers, uh, worksheets. If they share them via Canvas, students will be able to will be able to just select Canvas as one of the sources um, and import those documents and then read and listen to them accessibly. Uh, if you are getting CAPT site-wide, then there's a way to also integrate CAPT as an assignment. So you can create CAPT assignments from within Canvas and students can also get the single sign on. You, you, you will have kept it right in the, in the toolbar. Uh, there's a question Can I sign up for free through my college? Um, this came from Anonymous, so this could be a, potentially a student. So, yes, if, if, the, if the college would, would pay for kept it's very affordable, uh, they'll be, will be able to set you up with an account. Do you have a comparison chart with Kurzweil 3000? We currently use Kurzweil. Um, yes, we can share this with you. Um, I guess today or tomorrow. Uh, what we hear is that Capti is like Kurzweil on steroids, but more usable. Uh, Kurzweil is a great product, but you'll find that, that Capti is cheaper and more powerful. Would kept to help with exams and quizzes as well. Um, so yes, so you can you can create uh, assignments and control even which accommodations you want to provide to students and how much time students will have and lock them in a secure browser so they can't really get out. Um, the kept does not automatically grade quizzes and exams, but it gives students the ability to uh, interact with them. They can write their responses um, in the quiz and they'll be automatically submitted. Or they can also print out uh, or, or export a PDF of their responses. Does CAPTI support MathML uh, with Math Player, for example, Word Box? So, uh, unfortunately, not yet. Uh, CAPTI does not yet support MathML. All right, sounds like uh, we'd need to send out the comparison chart with Kurzweil. All right, thank you very much for attending. Um, 